So we got the velocity of a particle given by this velocity equation right there, 2t cubed plus 3t squared. We want to know the position. So very simple, just from yesterday and the day before probably. We just, uh, to get our position function, x of t, we'll integrate our velocity function v of t dt. And if we integrate v of t, we end up with x of t is equal to the integral of 2t cubed ought to be 1 half t to the fourth. And the integral of 3t squared ought to be t cubed. And then we'll add a plus c to it. And we'll be able to find the plus c value by using our initial condition that when we plug in 2, we get 1. So we'll say x of 2 is equal to 1 half of 2 to the 4 plus 2 cubed plus c, and that's 1. And so what do we get? 2 to the 4th is 16 divided by our 2, which would be 8, plus another 8, plus c is 1, and our c value is negative 15. Everybody good with that? Yeah. So we got x of t is 1 half t to the 4th plus t cubed minus 15. And we want x of 3 which ought to be 3 to the 4th, which is 81 over 2, plus 27 minus 15. So 81 halves plus 12, which is what? 81 halves plus 24 12, or 24 halves, which is 105 halves. Good or now? Good. All right. And do another one of these, another nice, simple, easy one. This time we're going from acceleration to velocity. So our velocity function ought to be the integral of our acceleration function, which ought to be, what's the integral of sine of t? Negative cosine. Negative cosine t plus some constant. And we know that if we plug in pi to that, negative cosine pi plus our constant needs to equal three. And what's the cosine of pi? One. Negative one. Negative one. So negative negative one, which gives us one, right? Plus c is three, so our constant is two. And then we have. Everybody good with that? Okay. And so when we plug in pi over three, we get negative cosine pi over three plus two. And what's the cosine of pi over three? One half. One half. So we end up with three halves. Everybody good there? Yeah. All right. Can we also solve these problems that with the calculator like we did yesterday? Say that again. I couldn't understand what you said. Uh, can we solve these problems with the calculator like we did yesterday? Um, you could, but I, I, I mean, I would expect that you should be able to do them by hand, and I would like you to do them by hand. So I mean, it's possible to do them with the calculator like we did yesterday, but. Problems that are this simple would be on the non calculator section of the AP test. So, uh, yeah, so somebody asked me to go back to the last slide for a second. So, I'll go back there for a second. Um, one more here. And so this one, we've got x of 2 is what we're looking for. And we're given an acceleration function, 3t squared plus t plus 1, with v of 2 equal to 9 and x of 1 equal to 6. So what's going to happen here? We're going to need to do what? Do we have to integrate it twice? We're going to have to do two sets of integration. And each time, we're going to have to find a constant. It's going to be a different constant each time. So uh, for, for x, how did you 
uh, can we just assume that you just integrate twice if there's multiple variables or like multiple? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're going to go with, you know, I mean, this is A of T is acceleration, V of T is velocity and X of T is position. So to go from acceleration to position, we got to get to velocity first and then integrate velocity to get to position. Got it. So our V of T should be the integral of 3T squared plus T plus 1 DT, which gives us V of T is what? T cubed. T squared over 2. And? Plus T. And our constant. We'll plug in 2 and get 9. And this is what, eight plus two plus two, so 12. So what's our constant? Negative, Negative three. three. Negative three. So we got V of T is, so we have here, we have T cubed plus T squared over two plus T minus three. Then we'll need to integrate again. to get our position function. <laughs> and that ought to give us what? Two to the fourth over four. So we're up to T cubed and we'll divide by three. So T cubed over six and T squared over two and minus three T plus a constant. And since I already used to use C over there, we'll just call this C sub one, just so we have some distinction that this constant is not the same as this constant necessarily. Maybe we'll get negative. But we're not going to get negative three. Um, we know that x of one is equal to six. So that'd be a fourth plus a six plus a half minus three plus that constant one. And let's see here. We add the three over, that's nine, right? So we got nine equals all this plus our constant one. And we have nine minus a fourth plus a six plus a half. So what's a fourth plus a six plus a half? The common denominator there is 12, right? So that's three twelfths plus two twelfths. That's five twelfths plus six twelfths. That's 11 twelfths. So we got nine minus 11 twelfths. That should be 108 twelfths, right? Minus 11 twelfths or 97 twelfths. Everybody good with that? Yeah. All right. So we've got x of t is now equal to t to the fourth over four. What do we have? t cubed over six, t squared over two, minus three t, and then what do we just say? Plus 97 twelfths. Yeah. And we want x of, what do we want? x of two? Yeah, it's a two. Two to the fourth is 16 over four, right? That's a four. And then that should be eight sixths or four thirds if we want. Then this ought to be plus two. This ought to be minus six. And then we still got 97 twice. Four plus two is six, minus six cancels out. So we've now got what, 16 twelfths plus 97 twelfths. So that'd be 113 twelfths. Good or no? Good. Good. All right. So we're doing all right here. We've, uh, I feel like, learned how to solve our differential equations, find the constants associated with them, and do all that fun stuff. Everybody feel pretty comfortable with all that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, there are some differential equations that don't fall into this nice little category of easy for us to solve. Okay. Um, there may be a function that we just might not be able to find the integral of, like we had before, right? And we needed to use a calculator to approximate an actual value of it. But sometimes we might have a function that we can't integrate and that we just want to have a general idea of what the solution looks like. Maybe we want to be able to sketch the curve um, 
that is the solution to the differential equation because you know every differential equation is going to have some sort of solution so we should be able to sketch what the graph of it looks like that'd be nice to be able to do and so what we're going to do for the last 10 or so minutes here is talk about a method to do that we're going to use it with a simple function that we could integrate and find the solution to um, just to get the idea and then we're going to apply it with some other more complicated functions so what we're doing is called slope fields um, and a slope field is just a graphical approximation of the solution to a differential equation okay? so um the way we're going to do this is we're going to think about what a derivative really is and if we think back to when we first started talking about derivatives what's a derivative what does it represent slope of the tangent line right it's the slope of the tangent line to the function so if i knew that my derivative was cosine x that means that the slope of the line tangent to my solution to y can be modeled using the cosine x function. So I could just plug in x values and I could sketch little tiny line segments, right? Of varying slopes, depending on what the value of cosine x is when I plug in that x value. And if I drew enough of those close enough together, it should be a very good approximation of what the solution to that differential equation looks like. That sort of makes sense or no wait so you're what are you what are you graphing right here again what is it so we're not graphing something in the sense that we normally graph stuff what we're going to do is we're going to say that cosine x represents the line the slope of the line tangent to y right i'll even write that out here this represents the slope of the line tangent to y and remember when we did like let's say linearization right and we said if we had a small enough scale the tangent line begins to resemble the actual function true that's what we we like that's how we approximated our functions on very small intervals by using this tangent line idea remember do we remember doing that yeah yeah, well, yeah. so that's the whole idea that we're going to use here we're just going to draw a bunch of little lines that are tangent to y that come from cosine x and say well if i had enough of those and i could follow the trajectory of those tiny little slopes it should resemble the function y equals whatever it is, which you know we know if we know what the um, solution to dy dx equals cosine x is, right? What is it? Negative sine x. No, 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 I hope it's not negative sine x. I hope it's positive sine x. Right? Integral of cosine is sine because the derivative of sine is cosine. Right? So if I were to use cosine x at a bunch of little x values, you know, a bunch of x values it should, if I sketch the lines tangent to this curve, y equals sine x, it should resemble y equals sine x if I have enough of them. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to say, what happens, what does dy dx equal if x equals zero? dy dx equals what? If x is zero, what is dy dx equal? One. One. So that means that anywhere, anywhere on this graph where x equals zero, the tangent line to the solution to this differential curve has a slope of one. So anywhere where x is zero, I'm just going to draw some little line segments that have a slope of about one. Well, you guys agree that those all have a slope of about one? I hope. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What about if X was, let's just make this a little 
easy. What if x was pi over 2? What would dy dx equal? What's the cosine? <laughs> Zero. So everywhere where dy dx equals pi over 2, and I'm going to call this first little hash mark pi over 2, I should have little lines that are a slope of 0. And so I've done that. What about when x is pi? They should be negative 1. Negative 1. So we'll just call this pi. Negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. And what about at 3 pi over 2? Here. Should be back to 0. So we'll go back to slopes of 0 here. Everywhere the dy dx is 3 pi over 2. And what about at 2 pi? Should be back to one. And what about going the other direction? Negative pi over two would be zero. Let's sketch those in real quick. And negative pi would be back to negative one. And negative three pi over two would be zero again. And negative 2 pi would be back to 1. And if you were to try to sketch a curve that went through any point on here, let's just say through the point 0, 0, and follow the trajectories of these slopes, I know that I'd start at a slope of 1. I'd have to narrow out and get to a slope of 0 by the time I got to pi over 2. So it should do something like that. And then by the time I got back to pi, I should be back down to a slope of negative one. And then it should be back to a slope of zero and then back to a slope of one. And same thing going this way. It should follow and model the slopes of these curves or the slopes of these little line segments. Um, and what does this look like? It looks just like a sine curve, right? Sine starts in the middle of an oscillation right here at the origin, right? Goes up and then down, and then up, and then down. And it would repeat infinitely like that. And so that's what a why slope then go through, What's that? I was just going to say, why then go through all the trouble of doing all these approximations if you're just graphing sine? Why can't you just know that the integral of cosine x is sine x and just graph that? Well, we could, but we're using one that we're able to integrate first that we know what the integral is so we know what it should look like to make sure that it actually works right so i wouldn't uh, okay. ask you to do this for cosine x um, i would ask you to do it for something that you are not able to integrate um, which we'll do in a minute so does that make sense conceptually what we're doing here that we're going to take the derivative and say the derivative represents the tangent line so i'm going to sketch the little little tangent lines that have the appropriate slope at each point and then if I want to sketch the curve through it, I can. And suppose I, you know, and this this takes into account every single constant that I could attach to this. Cosine x plus 7, right, would be way up, you know, way up high at 7. But it would still have these same little trajectory slopes. And we just follow it along and get something that looks like a nice sine curve, just shift it up 7 units. Right, no matter where I start, we're going to end up looking like a sine curve. Does that make sense or no? Yeah, it makes some sense, yeah. Okay, so what we're going to do with this, and I don't think we're going to have time really today because we've only got like one minute left, but um, tomorrow we'll do this with the square root of x squared minus x plus 1, which is a function that you definitely are not able to take the integral of. Would you agree that there's no good way for you to take that integral, if you know of? Yeah. 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 Well, we should be able to use this same method and just plug in some x values and get a general idea of what the solution to it looks like. And then if I wanted you to sketch it through a specific point, we should be able to sketch it through a specific point by just you know, choosing a point and following the slopes. 
And what we're also going to do is um, tomorrow as well, we're going to do this with differential equations that involve both x and y, which you definitely are not able to solve currently. So that's sort of a little look ahead to what we're going to be doing. Um, we've done it with one function that we knew what the integral was already just to get an idea. That's where we're headed. And then um, eventually we're going to work with some of these ones that have multiple variables, not one like this, because that one we won't learn how to solve in this class, but ones where we have a quotient or a multiplication of different variables. And we'll be able to solve those ones by hand as well, or at least most of them. So that's, that's where we're heading tomorrow. We're going to get through quite a bit. We'll probably lecture the entire period tomorrow or most of the period to get through most of the rest of differential equations. Anybody have any questions before we're done? 